About a month ago, I sat down with Talison Jaffe to talk about his character Molly Muck, and also about Percy from Vox Machina, and just about everything else in between. Uh, Molly Mock, uh, I thought process was a couple things for, for the new character. Uh, the first was, uh, what else have I not done? And, and I had watched Matt build a character class, uh, the, the Blood Hunter. I'm like, that's cool and kind of gothy. I'm into that. Uh, and then when Percy had uh, almost died the first time, I immediately started thinking up a new character. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I thought of ooh, that would be fun was a traveling carny. Uh, and I had this notion of him rolling into town, uh, like after if Percy didn't come back and uh, making money by telling scary stories of the the terrible tinker of Taldore. And uh... <laughs> did you choose a tiefling for any reason? Um, yeah. God, how did how did I wanted somebody? I wanted a character that was charming but not charming. I suppose would be the best. I wanted to try and recreate the uh, the. The, the, the carnival worker experience as tightly as I could, which are people who are very, very charming, but also very used to having people make a... There's a wonderful thing about, about characters who uh, are comfortable with people making assumptions about them. Uh, and it's a great superpower, and I have, I have friends who use it all the time. Is uh, it's Instantly, you can take one look at somebody and instantly know they know one thing about you, and you take one look at them and instantly you know everything about them. And you can walk into a room as a tiefling, and how you see someone react, you instantly know everything you need to know about them. And it's very useful, and it's a great instant litmus test of figuring out who you're going to be reacting to, how you're going to be reacting to these people. And it's, a, it's, it's fun for a, for a traveling character like that to just have, have this nice instant filter for the world where, like, I've just, I just, there's like 80% of people I don't need to talk to, and that's so nice. I'm just here to steal their shit. That's fascinating. That's a fa actually just a fascinating outlook on life in general. Uh, any goth kid, yeah. yeah. Any goth kid knows you that. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, you put on, you put on a, you know, you put on some some weird clothing, and you and there's either people are gonna be like, oh my god, your hair is so cool, or they're gonna be like, mm. I'm like yeah, I don't need to know anybody who looks at these looks are at people either that way. Your people or they're, not, they're yeah, not. or they're or they're not really people people at all, are they? <laughs> you got some damage if you're looking at people and making assumptions. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> How is this character different from, like, what were you looking for, like, a, a dramatic difference um, in character? Yeah, well, I mean, like, there, there's, there's a, Percy was really a character, whereas Molly, I'm definitely delving into a little bit of my own self. Yeah. Uh, not entirely, obviously, not even, uh, and he's, he's a little bit of me, he's a little bit of, he's a little bit of me, he's a little bit of um, older friends of mine from that, from the Ren Fair Life and, and Carnival performers and, Burning Man world and uh, some artist friends of mine who are talent, talented and, and charming but kind of a mess and, and moral but not trustworthy and it, it, it's a, it was a very interesting, I'm, I know I'm getting a little, I'm flying a little bit off on this one. Um, it's nice playing a happy person. Uh, I thought I wanted someone happy, I, I wanted to be someone who was not that bright. Yeah. And he's he's emotionally intelligent, but he's he's world world dumb. I don't think it's really come up, but he's just literate to the point that one can call oneself literate. And he's never read a book, um, doesn't know the names of anything, doesn't know the town, doesn't know doesn't know anything about the world. Uh, doesn't really care. Uh, it's not really interested in things. Uh, very much a, a so, sort of an elemental character, really. Oh yeah, it's, it's a sensualist, a libertine, uh, uh, for as much as a D and D character can be. Uh, really, just there for the ride. A good sense of getting of when it's time to leave town. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, for per well, yeah, personal experience. Well, okay. Well. It's time to go. Let's grab well, all the those stuff. Those are torches. I don't think those um, are for us. They're for us. Yeah, but he's he's not he's not the smart one. He's not the strong one. He's not the he's not the charismatic one. He's he's, if anything, just the one who knows how to take care of things that and take care of people that are not used to being taken care of and and how to kind of wrangle uh, wrangle screw ups, mm -hmm. which is anybody who works a carnival knows how to wrangle a screw up. It's just it's in keeping. Shitty, vicious, <laughs> snarky, 
tired people on on track doing what they need to do. What about the Blood Hunter made it feel gothy to you? Oh, it, I, I like the risk reward action a- aspect. Or at least I'll say I like the risk reward aspect of Blood Hunters. Um, in theory, actually, in practice, this there's a lot of risking, which I'm slightly slightly regretting. Like, why do I have to keep putting it on the line if I want to do anything? I just immediately go ten hit points down anytime I want to like be seriously, yeah. seriously scary. Um, I like especially at the upper levels. I kind of uh, for the build of the character, and a little bit of that is still uh, um, a mystery. I had this notion of of making a character with a completely clean slate and I had this and there's aspects of it I won't really be able to get into until he's either dead and buried or the game is over um, I had I and I, I had this notion of a character who was really could come from a place of nothing no baggage and it's a good it's it was a it was a good uh, uh, build for a character like that there's all this knowledge that's just innate in him and all this power that's who, whatever happened to him before he lost his memory, for anybody who doesn't know, um, it all that all that information is just keyed in physically. So there's just it's such a it, it's such a, a physically based uh, archetype with with the idea of like the, the blood having all this power that I thought it would be a good way of giving him all the clues to what he is uh, and letting him experiment with them. And slowly, it's not that he's even necessarily. Is he gaining more power? Or is he just discovering things he could do before that he can't do now? And I, I don't know. Uh, but I made sure that Matt knows that I don't know, and that there's all sort. Of, I, you know, I laid out everything I thought might be possible, and Matt just nods. And went, okay, I'll, I'll figure something out, and God only knows. That makes a lot of sense. That's, I mean, like to, I mean, you, the only other way you could go with that is being a sorcerer. But like to have. I was that, thinking like, sorcerer innate, was number two. Yeah, because <laughs> something for, obviously your past is a, con- a connection. Certainly, warlock could be kind of weird. Well, if yeah, you I, had like no memory, and like why would you just be thrown into the void of the world without purpose? Yeah, there's there's not. I mean, like there's not a lot of characters that can that can run around with a black blank slate and have have that kind of like yeah. magical power. Sorcerer was was definitely was what I was going to go with if I didn't go with blood hunter. Yeah, uh, I I love sorcerers. They're fun. Uh, and I like the the management of them, uh, but yeah, I thought this would be an interesting and uh, this would. I, I'm very big on having like an, a little bit of a narrative metaphor for any character. And Percy was all about was this notion of of redemption versus the irredeemable, which was really fun to play with. Uh, and this one is is somebody who has earned the right to not to not be responsible for anything that happened before. This is somebody who is owes nothing. And is owed nothing, and what that means, and what that means with anything—the things that are in, indivisible from that. Of somebody who still has these things that came from a life that that had he had nothing to do with, but is still kind of wandered out and tried to redefine themselves, and has kind of taken on an identity that is completely separate from anything that came before. And whether or not he owes anything to that previous life, or and if he does, what are those things? Uh, and and. How, what kind of hold does that previous life still have, or does it not? Right. Is there anything about? Because uh, I tend to make characters that are some aspect of my personality, um, or something I even want to like just kind of explore and figure out. Like I'll play a character that is like maybe confident in a way I'm not, or or insecure in a way I'm not. Is there something about this character that that specifically appealed to you? Yes, a lot. I mean, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, you're right, he is so he is so incredibly different than Percy. Yeah, he he, he certainly he he dresses the way I, I, I wish I would dress all the time if I had if I had my druthers and and the unlimited closet of doom. Um, I love I he's 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 a character who's certainly following a path that I thought about for my life of like I could just I could just go and and, and work backstage at these things for the rest of my life and be perfectly content. Or other versions of that, of, of kind of, uh, there's a great phrase for it, disappearing into, into, uh, um, uh, into, into the oblivion of, of, of base pleasure that is, that is drink and drugs and sex and, and working one gig after another. And the, the, the endless gig, he is, he is definitely another aspect of the endless gig uh, human, which was definitely me for many, many years. This has opened up a lot of incredibly unexpected creative doors 
for all of you. It's 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 never ending doors. It's a. Uh, it's difficult to focus on just one thing, <laughs> is what I'll say. I love, I love watching what's happening around the show. I'll I'll say I'll I'll say this is that the D and D community, especially in LA, but like, all over California, all over the country, all over. We got people in from England. Uh, it's. This is everything I, I wish I had when I was a teenager. This is amazing, uh, and it's. It's really good, even seeing a lot of familiar faces of these of these friends of ours that have been toiling in the internet fields of obscurity for many many years, finally like getting out and uh, discovering that there's people interested in the sort of stuff we're doing. I'm I'm loving seeing this community come together, and I love that like we're seeing all these different types of games uh, uh, get seen and. And not not just, and I love the, the way we play on Critical Role, and I just love seeing other the way other people play too, and just seeing all these other games. I'm a big Sirens of the uh, Sirens of the Realm fan, and I love I love the way that they've got things going with the music, and uh, I love uh, the like, dice camera action. I love that all these all these different groups are doing so much fun stuff. It, it, and I, I probably have asked you this question mm -hmm. before, but do you have like a white whale? Like, what's the most ideal scenario for you? Like, this just having like a completely autonomous theater troupe. <laughs> I have a pretty completely autonomous theater troupe. Yeah, you essentially huh. you guys have become that. Yeah, and and especially with the whole Geek and Sundry family, there's so many talented. I mean, the, the streamers on that channel are so talented, uh, and I definitely know I've been making relationships with people that are going to pay off. We're going to be working together and creating together for for a long, long, long time. Uh, is there is there a white whale? Um, Sleep. <laughs> eight hours. Eight hours of glorious sleep. Uh, someday. I, there, there is, I will say, whatever white whales are actually so close to possible that I'm not allowed to speak, speak them out there loud. Are many, there are many secrets. There are many, we are, yeah, my, my hair is full of secrets. <laughs> there, are, there are definitely some, some ideas that are so big and that we look at and go like, we, we won't utter them out loud, but my God, if we could get away with doing something so crazy. I liked Percy a lot because I, I didn't like him. Yes. <laughs> and, Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I didn't feel like he was supposed to be liked. But mm -hmm. the ending of it was so emotional for me. Like, he had come yeah, so... Uh, not that, I wouldn't say full circle, but, like... Uh, there was a circle. There, there, like, uh, in the moment where you give up your weapons... Your guns, and it, like immediately, I hear heaven's door in my head, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm about to cry. Yeah, like, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't really talk after that. We talked right no, before that. No, no, it was right before. And you remember, I, I, I assume, you, like, I was like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what's gonna, I don't yeah, know yeah. what to do. I don't know what's gonna happen. I have a plan, but it's and my plan went to shit so quickly. Uh, <laughs> oh, and the the, the yeah, clock I, tower. I had a whole thought about about the. I had a whole thought about the contract and how I could make that work, and then. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing?" It was great. I've, I've never, I've never experienced that kind of epiphany with a character before. It was really a, it was, it was a lot. Was that that decision felt like that was made at the very, very last? That second was too. made. That that whole thing happened in like the last three minutes. Like in like, your face. Yeah, I was just like, "What the what the fuck is going on?" I was really sucked because I, I, I had been asking this question of like, "What is his damage? Like, what is the fucking problem with this guy? Why is he like this?" And I didn't figure it out until like three minutes before, before like, I was like, oh my God, he is, I've never actually talked about the fact that his whole, he has never spoken aloud about the fact that his whole fucking family died. That's awful. Holy fuck. And, and, and that was, that was what that was, was just, I have to say this out loud, don't I? Oh shit. That was a long way to go to be like, okay, my whole family was murdered in front of me. That was really bad and it was probably very traumatizing. Uh, I should probably deal with that now <laughs> that I've... <laughs> just ruined everything. It was a very intense last few moments. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Molly's going to get anything. I don't. But again, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what's in Molly's Molly's box of terrible yet. He's and Molly has no interest uh, at all. So that's going to be interesting. He's going to fight kicking and screaming into that door. Where do you do you have an idea where Molly's going to go? Uh, or is this very much a character where it could be anything? Uh, have you ever seen Have you ever seen the movie? I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend a movie on a on a on a YouTube uh, uh, wrist cutters. 
Yes. Uh, that's, yeah, <laughs> there we go. He's, <laughs> he's, he's not going anywhere. This is actually, I mean, like, he's pretty much with this group because he's literally never experienced the act of being alone for more than 24 hours in his conscious life. Mm -hmm. And he only knows how to function in a group dynamic and only in a group of not healthy people. And he's like literally hopped from a group of unhealthy people to another group of unhealthy people. And he's just really good at kind of managing that when it needs managing. Mm -hmm. And that's it. A big thank you yet again to Talos and Jaffe for being on D&D &D Beyond. I'm Todd Kendrick, your host and content director at D&D &D Beyond. Thank you for watching.